while we're on the topic of um, offensive corruption, uh, I just I've got to bring this study up because pe- people aren't going to hear about it. I I luckily only I saw a headline in a in a printed newspaper called the Montreal Gazette, and I was like, yeah. Um, I if I hadn't seen it, it was called. Let me see what it was called. Um, judge dismisses. No, 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 no. Where is the article? Judge dismisses. Le- oh, here we go. Uh, it was there was some commission that I wasn't aware of. The you know the government investigating its own incompetence or independent third parties investigating government corruption and government incompetence. I've been talking about it from the beginning, or at least from the beginning when I became aware of it where I was getting calls as an attorney, or I was getting calls from people saying, I need representation. On the one hand, I can't access my loved one who's at a long-term healthcare facility. On the other hand, these facilities are ill-equipped, understaffed, um, can't deal with this crisis. People are suffering. Uh, people are passing away. I talked at length about the study of, uh, the, what did the government conclude? That one in three Deaths that occurred at long care health, long-term healthcare facilities were not Rona induced. They actually were neglect, dehydration. Just imagine that. And that's assuming that that number is accurate. And I suspect if I were if I were a betting man, which I sometimes am, that's a gross underestimation. And I don't think that they were making the distinction at the time. One in three for every two elderly people who 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 succumb to COVID in long-term healthcare facilities. One in three succumb because of neglect, dehydration, malnourishment, lack of care. Let that sink in. At the time, by the way, and you all know this if you've been watching, Justin Trudeau was donating 16 tons of PPE, personal protective equipment, to China in February 2020. And then come March, April, May, when everybody knew what was here and many people knew what was coming, uh, I'm getting calls because friends, family, strangers are calling me crying because their loved one is at a long-term healthcare facility where they don't have face masks. They don't have gloves. They didn't have the PPE that they needed because our benevolent government donated our PPE, leaving us high and dry. And then when the numbers were skyrocketing and they weren't distinguishing between neglect deaths and COVID deaths, and they weren't distinguishing between long-term healthcare facility deaths and the general population at large, they weren't distinguishing between demographics of age, you know, pre-existing comorbidities. They used that number to justify shredding and desecrating our charter of rights and our rights as citizens, locked us in our homes, isolated us from friends and family, shut down schools, shut down businesses. They exploited the number that they exacerbated to justify their unconstitutional hammer on Canadian society. Well, then I've sort of gotten ahead of myself in terms of getting to the conclusion, but let's just, let's just read this because this is the latest study now coming out of Quebec. See, it, it's coming out of Quebec, but if anybody thinks that this is unique to Quebec, um, you're wrong. And I don't think anybody thinks that, by the way. I don't think there's anybody who could be so naive to think that this is unique to Quebec. This right here, the study, now what was it called? The Hunt? Uh, it was called uh, the Heron. The Heron. I think it's called the Heron Inquiry because that's the long-term care facility where this occurred. This occurred in Ontario. This occurred across Canada. This occurred in Michigan, Pennsylvania, New York. Uh, it we're not yet certain if what occurred in Canada is quite as egregious as what occurred in Cuomo's New York, Whitmer's Michigan, Wolf's Pennsylvania, where they were sending COVID positive patients back to long-term healthcare facilities, making it unlawful, compelling those facilities to take back those COVID positive patients. And then in in Cuomo's case, at least, immunizing long-term healthcare facilities from the consequences of this practice. They, I think they talked about doing that in Ontario as well under Doug Ford. I think they talked about immunizing long-term healthcare facility executives. So I don't know if what happened in Quebec and Canada is quite as bad as what happened in Michigan, Pennsylvania, New York. I think there's some a few other states. But this is not unique to Quebec. This is just now, we had the military investigating Canada, and now we have a, a similar conclusion coming out of Quebec. And let's just read it. COVID-19 emails reveal Quebec ministers knew about Heron Care Home tragedy. Okay. By the way, incompetence turns into um, negligence. It turns into a l- potentially criminal wrongdoing with knowledge. Criminal law, you have the actus reus, which is the act that is criminal, and the mens rea, which is the intention to have committed the criminal act. Not the intention to have broken the law, 
just the intention to have committed the act, which is itself illegal. You may not know that the act is illegal, but if you have the intention to commit it, and you in fact commit it, that you've got actus reus and mens rea, and therefore you've got criminal culpability. At large, 30,000 foot overview. Let's just go to the article. An email tabled at an inquest into pandemic deaths reveals Quebec cabinet ministers knew about the dire situation at the Heron long-term care home at least 10 days earlier that they had previously acknowledged. 47 residents of the Montreal area private care home died during the first wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. Oh, by the way, and let's just see, 47 died. How many from COVID? Because I think, I do think they mentioned it. Leading to several investigations, including one by the coroner's office. The March 20, March 29, March, they locked us down. I believe it was March 20. I believe it was two weeks to flatten the curve started March 20, 2020. Um, first reported this week by Radio Canada is labeled urgent and warns the chief of staff to, uh, to seniors minister Marguerite Blais that there were, quote, almost no more staff to care for Heron's 154 residents. The e and by the way, understaffed and what they were doing at the time, they were circulating the understaffed staffers from one home to another and the infected staffers were transmitting the virus from one home to the other, thus exacerbating the spread through their incompetence. But let's just keep going. Uh, the email was reported, reportedly forwarded to Blay last night, while the health minister at the time, Daniel McCann, received a briefing on the situation the next day. However, both Blay and McCann have stated publicly that they only learned about conditions at the Heron Care Facility for Home from reading a news article on April 10, 2020. Premier François Legault told reporters Tuesday his government was reassured by the March 29, 2020 email because it stated that the local health authority was taking charge of the troubled long-term care. And th th this is Orwellian in its... Th they're reassured now. We now know that uh, our ministers at the time knew of something that they didn't disclose and when it became clear that they knew of something, they then apparently forgot that they knew when they apparently now have evidence that they knew. Liberal opposition leader Dominique Anglade on Tuesday demanded the resignation of McCad. Oh, he still works. Nice. It's good for him. He, he probably never missed a paycheck. Yeah. Kill one person, you're a murderer. Kill hundreds, thousands. It, it's a statistic, and you're a politician. Who is now the Minister of Higher Education, and Blay accusing them of lying to the public. I saw, I think the article in the Gazette was actually a little more, was a little more, um, not lofty, but uh, lo longer, had more details. Just, you know, okay, so they knew, so they knew it on March 29. So they knew that there was an outbreak. They were understaffed. L elderly people in long-term healthcare facilities were vulnerable, not just to the virus, but to the neglect as well. They were dying from both, but lumping them all together as COVID deaths. And why? What did they do with these increase in deaths? What did they do with this number that we now know results from their negligence, incompetence, corruption? What did they do with this number? They then take that number and say, look at all of the, de the devastation. Lock everyone down. Look, look at how many people are becoming victims of our incompetence and neglect. We, well, there's a problem and we have to solve it now. Let's, 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 there's a problem that we've created. Uh, we're going to lie about or conceal the actual cause of the problem. We're going to lie and conceal about our knowledge of the problem. And then we're going to come to you citizens and say, we know the solution. We are the solution. And we're going to take away your rights to compensate for our incompetence, corruption, and knowledge of it. I mean, it, it, it's, it's just, it's beyond shocking. And people just don't know about it. They just don't care. And at a certain point in time, you know, people don't want, people have a short memory span. And because people don't want to realize that they have been lied to, exploited, stolen from, spiritually, economically, constitutionally, because they don't want to admit that they were duped and that the government exploited them in their ignorance, they have to have an even shorter memory. So that they're like, okay, well, what can we do about it now? Just, just to quote Hillary Clinton, what difference does it make now? Let's go on with the government continuing to think that they should be in a position to be telling us what to do with our lives, that they know the answers to the problems that they're causing. And that they're not telling us that they're causing the problems until it becomes undeniable because people actually investigate. People actually look into it. And then they have to admit, okay, he knew. Slap on the wrist. Still minister of higher education. 
didn't miss a paycheck, probably vacationed, uh, you know, in Bart's, St. Bart's Island, like that guy from Ontario, probably, you know, went down to Barbados, like all of the, you know, many other politicians, all the while, you know, the people suffered. The people suffer financially, spiritually, economically, constitutionally. My partner was in COVID isolation. I was not allowed to visit. Got him home after four days, no shower, no teeth brushing, and so dehydrated, he didn't urinate for the first 24 hours. He is 36 with MS. It's, it's, Kaylee, it's, I can't, I can't use words that can be potentially defamatory. It is, in the estimation of some, potentially um, sanctionable behavior. Um, and what was I just thinking about? I mean, look, I, I, I had an incident with my grandmother-in-law. It, t- it, takes, it takes a lawyer's letter sometimes for people to do things. And, and you're like, you can't, it's like, it's, 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 a, it's the terrible thing about, you know, Canada, Quebec, free healthcare. Yeah, everybody touts universal healthcare in Canada. But when you get stuck in the system, it's not quite as good as it is when you have connections, when you have people you can turn to, doctors, lawyers. It's a great, it's, it's universal, universally bad for everybody unless you're connected, unless you have doctors in the family or lawyers in the family. So yes, long-term healthcare facilities, even the ones that were private, you, 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 they, people, were paying for tre- people were paying for care that they weren't getting. And then every now and again, it just takes someone who knows a lawyer to get them on the lookout, but only for one patient because they can't do it for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah there, there, oh, there, there, was, there was a recent fine. Yeah, you're right. No, but that's it. So they've they've they they they've done an inquiry now. They the, the, there's been an inquiry. They have determined that the government lied, misled. It led to tragedy, and now it's going to be the government to say, "Well, we got we got to fix up healthcare. We got to give ourselves raise." Oh yeah, I think that, I think they did actually just give themselves raise raises. But that's the latest coming out of Quebec. It's just and 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 from from what it seems, it seems that François Legault, if you believe the polls, which I I don't, in general. Uh, he's he's he still looks like he's going to get reelected if elections were held today that are going to be held in November 2022. Uh, what year are we? 2022. My friend has no doctor, no lawyer friend, was essential worker with contract, has burnt out last year, has been totally isolated since then. I am grateful. Sh- it's it's and I you know I just posted the clip from yesterday breaking you know breaking down that article. Now the government now real it, it, the government and the media now admit devastating psychological impact from the pandemic. It's from the pandemic. It's not from the government's response to the pandemic. It's from the pandemic. It's not from isolation of being locked in your two and a half apartment for two years. It's not from the isolation of not being able to celebrate Christmas. It's not from the isolation of not being able to have marriages, weddings. It's not from, you know, fathers or parents not being able to be in the delivery room when their spouse is giving birth. It's not from that. It's not from not being able to congregate, to mourn the death of a loved one. It's from the pandemic. It has nothing to do with the government. It only has to do with what the government was fighting. It's it's beyond the pale and it's beyond the words. Uh, hold on, what did this person just say here? Viva, check to see if you're still monetized. I be- <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Still green. And I, and I, I got to tell you people, I don't, it's not the monetization. It's the suppression in the algorithm that comes with demonetization. Because why would YouTube promote anything that they can't, you know, run 15 ads on. The funny thing is also, I do notice that w- when it does become remonetized, if I don't take care of the, the spacing of the ads, they're in a, they're in a, they're in wacky places and they're in wacky proximity to one another. No, no, it's, it's, it's Ruth. Oh, that's I, Ruth Elizabeth. Ruth was my grandmother's first name and my, my grandmother-in-law's first name. Actually, I never even put that together. My grandmother, chubby cheek, Edna was Ruth Edna. And my grandmother was Ruth. Yeah, no, no, they, 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 um, they, they, people were not allowed to, to you know, it, it, it is enough to make you very angry with the government when, you know, they're off holding protests, they're off traveling overseas, traveling down south, and they are preventing people from congregating for funerals. I mean, it, it's, um, my grandmother. It's, it, 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 it was, I, my grandmother died November, 2019 at 103, uh, other than having a, I mean, a wickedly, I guess, blessed life, except for the fact that my grandfather died when she was very young. My grandfather died when I was two. So she spent, 
you know, nearly 40 years living without her husband, which I always found to be something of a tragedy. She lived to 103. She passed away in November 2019. We had a proper funeral. We all mourned and celebrated her life properly. And that has been denied to a, a generation while these politicians imposing these rules were all breaking them themselves. I mean, I was going to make a list, but I could do it off, off the top of my head. You had Lightfoot. You had Schumer. You had Gretchen Whitmer, you had Cuomo, you had Doug Ford, you had Justin Trudeau, you had, uh, now I've lost the names, you had Jagmeet Singh. All of these people imposing soul-crushing, inhumane policies on humans were themselves breaking the rules or, you know, were never, were never subject to them in the first place. It's good to be king. Funny how you use the term two and a half as though anyone outside Quebec would know. I lived in Montreal two years and still don't. Hold on, what's two and a half? Funny how you use the term two and a half. What am I supposed to say? 2.5? Richard, anyhow, thank you very much. Now, now I'm curious. And so that's that. That's, that's the latest out of Quebec. And expect more of it. But collective memory being what it is, collective ego, individual ego being what it is, people are going to want to forget about how they had a meaningful segment, of a meaningful era of their life stolen. They're going to want to forget how they had a meaningful era of their children's lives stolen. Oh, a two and a half. Okay, fine. Oh, nobody gets two and a half. So I think it means two bedrooms and a bathroom. I think the half is a bathroom. Don't, I was not able to be with my hubby when he had open heart surgery in January. Yep. And, and, and I've heard, I've heard stories, but I've also met people who I know who are not, if they're lying to me, I can never, I, you know, they can lie to me. Um, questioned about whether or not they were actually going to be given surgery that they needed because of their medical status. And it, this makes this makes sense to people. And a lot of people are just going to forget about the generational harm that we've caused. But I, I think until a certain time, I am predicting, and I'm going to put it out on Twitter later because I, I meant to do it this morning. In two to three generations, in 20 to 40 years, we're going to have a government apologizing for what it did to civilians to citizens to the generation within the 2020 to whenever this ends period and we're going to have a government paying out the largest settlement to canadian citizens in two to three generations 20 to 40 years for what they did it's going to trump the largest settlement that the canadian government just paid out because of what a previous generation of government did to a previous generation of canadians specifically indigenous children that's my prediction may i may i live long enough to see it touch wood and i now know what the touch wood i had a um, i had a daycare teacher who told me what touch wood meant and it means knock wood is you're supposed to be for religious good luck re touching the true wood of the cross and the the person in front of whom i said this was a religious uh i guess she was a religious religious but indian lady and she said no it's you can't do that because it can be offensive to some so you got to do touch gold so I, I can't touch gold i'm just gonna i guess i'll touch my wedding band which i think is if i can get it off my fat fingers. I don't know what metal this is. I think it's platinum. I forget. And yeah, so that's that. That's what's coming out of Quebec. 